Welcome to the 12 days of Christmas webinar event brought to you by Office Dynamics International. I hope that you are um, joining us today. Let's see here. Yes, Patty from Nebraska has just joined and Tracy. Okay, great. So welcome again to the 12 days of Christmas webinar event brought to you by Office Dynamics International. Day one kicks off the special event with a program titled Get Things Done. You will be able to find the handout for this webinar um, at our, let's see here, I will just copy and paste this link into our browser in our chat window for you as opposed to giving you the long link. So there is a handout, um, it's just bullet points, but please feel free to download that. We are not hosting Q&A today, so please be aware of that, but we will be having a special webinar on day three that will be dedicated solely to questions and answers with you. We will also be sending certificates for your time, so please watch and uh, give us a couple of days to get those certificates to you. Let's see here. Also, be sure to stay tuned until the end of the program because we do have a very special offer for you and we have a giveaway for those that, will, that are on the webinar with us. We will be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned if you can for that giveaway. All right, in the interest of time and keeping these events brief, we are going to forego the formal introductions throughout this entire event, the 12 Days of Christmas, and Joan Burge, the founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International, will get right into her content. So welcome, Joan. Hi, thank you, Jasmine. Woohoo! Happy holidays, everyone. It's December 1st. It's my favorite, favorite time of year. Um, I love this season, and I love it because uh, I, I want to just give and give and give. You know, that's why I love it so much, because I enjoy giving, and I, I really want to give you the gift of education um, this year. In the past, we've done, we've had the 12 days of Christmas, but we never have done 12 days of webinars. So, wow, <laughs> it's going to be fun. I promise you it's going to be fast. I'm going to be short. I'm going to be to the point. I just want to give you awesome tips and techniques um, that you can apply immediately uh, in your personal life and in your work life. And as Jasmine said, on the third day, we're going to take questions, any kind of questions that you want. It's solely mapped out for Q&A. So get your questions ready, make notes, and that's what we're gonna do on the third day. So uh, I hope you have, maybe you've got a cup of a hot chocolate or um, some tea or something with you. Jasmine, we have our beverages ready. And um, welcome from around the world. I see we have someone from Scotland and such. So welcome to everyone. Well, today's topic is get things done and control your day. Uh, this is such a highly requested topic from assistants. In fact, I've just been going through 18 pages of a survey that we gave out several months ago to assistants asking what would they like more help on and advice on, and do you know what the top three requested items were? Prioritization, time management, and organizational skills. So, uh, here are my best uh, 10 tips for you today. So, first of all, early in the day, clarify your priorities, your top five priorities for the day. This is critically important because priorities are constantly shifting. And what you thought were the priorities when you left work at five o'clock yesterday probably has or ha they have changed. Because remember that many of your executives and managers are working in the evenings. They are checking their email. They are having conference calls. And therefore, their priorities are shifting, which means your priorities are probably going to shift. What we love to do here at Office Dynamics and what I've done ever since I was a, a young assistant was to have a daily huddle with my executive and Jasmine and I have had daily huddles over the years and now Jasmine's having daily huddles with Malia and that is the main reason is to clarify our top priorities for the day to make sure we're on track and we're all heading in the same direction and that will really help you because then as other things come in throughout the day 
you can make that judgment call is the new item that came in more important than what you have on your list for today for your top five priorities and remember a b or c activity should never supersede an a priority so even right now i would like you to think about what are the top five things that you must get done before the end of today. They're critically important. They cannot wait till tomorrow. Can you quickly identify that in your mind? And that's what you want to keep your focus on today. And then as new items come in to you, filter those in and decide are those A priorities? If they are, are they an A1, an A2, or an A3? Is it a B priority or a C priority? And that's the coding system that we use here at Office Dynamics. A priority means we have to get that done within the next 24 hours. A B priority was, is within the next few days. A C priority is within maybe three or four weeks. And that's how we communicate. We can quickly code our priorities. Um, also make sure you do clarify your executive's priorities, as I said because those are, you know, and especially the ones that you're involved in, and make sure you, you merge everything together. The second um, technique or tip, best piece of advice I can give you out of all my 10 tips, is to focus on the task at hand. Focusing is critically important, folks. You've got to really work on that skill. And it is actually a skill that we have to develop. Everyone does not naturally have the ability to stay focused. And also, though, what is happening to all of us, because of all the uh, technology and all the social media and all the information that is out there, we're all losing focus. So um, we have to work at it. We have to work really hard. And uh, a couple things to help you. Um, and I've talked about this before. So if you've heard this, I'm going to tell you again. It's always good to keep in mind. Instead of thinking of multitasking, picture yourself as a great juggler. You are a juggler of many things. So if you think about a juggler, a juggler has all these balls up in the air, right? But they're focused on what is in their hand right now at this moment, but they can see everything else. They know all the other balls are up there, but they're focused on this one ball. And when they're done with that, they'll take the next one and focus on it. So that's what I do. I picture myself as this awesome juggler. So right now I am focused on you. I am focused in this moment, what we're doing. But I know and I can see in my peripheral vision the 10 other items that I've got to get accomplished today, they're there, but they're not in my focus. So if you could picture yourself being a great juggler, it will help you tremendously. So right now, if you're attending this webinar, be focused on this webinar. Don't be looking at something else and trying to do email and reading and things like that. Be absorbed, pay attention, because also this will help you develop the skill of focusing. Um, we also have uh, some great um, YouTube, video, YouTube videos that Jasmine and I had um, recently viewed, and, and they're awesome. And they, the, the people who are um, hosting these YouTube videos are very insightful and are, they talk about attention deficit and how we need to be focused and the impact of social media. And um, I've asked Jasmine right before we came on actually today, if she can make those links available to you, the videos available to you because they are very good. And you might wanna even watch those with a team of your administrative peers. Uh, they're short, you know, maybe about 10 minutes, five minutes, I think one's 15 minutes the most. But like I said, they're really inform informational. So I'm um, focusing. Let's go to the third tip, and that's to neutralize information overload. Wow, we're really 
inundated today, aren't we, with information? I know even, I've just noticed with doing holiday shopping um, and trying to maybe order some things on Amazon, especially items that I maybe want to have shipped to my grandchildren in another state. And I get on Amazon at night, and there's so much information. It, there's just so many offerings and, and so many different things that for me, I get so overwhelmed, I just end up not doing anything. Um, and that's just one example, but you have information coming to you all day. Uh, we have information being fed to us. So the strategy is to be selective. You don't have everything that comes your way. You don't have to read everything that comes into your inbox. How many times do you take time to maybe read something that really truly isn't business related, uh, but it comes into your inbox, or maybe you've signed up for some different things, but there's something that you don't really need to read, especially during the day at work. But I would say overall, even in your personal life, to truly um, not get so caught up in all the information that you're exposed to because that then becomes stressful. You start to think about all the things then that are out there and what you have to do. And then before you know it, you feel like you've lost control and you're pulled in a hundred directions. How many times have you maybe um, been on the internet, you've done a search and you're, you're searching for something specific and then all of a sudden within what you're reading, it links you to something else. And then that links you to something else. And that links you to something else. And then after 10 minutes, you're, you're thinking, well, why was I even here? What did I come for in the beginning? So again, keeping your focus, <laughs> thinking about your goals, your objectives, your priorities, what are you trying to accomplish? And then again, minimizing the information that you get exposed to. Our fourth tip is to ask others for specific deadlines. This is critically important for administrative professionals. How many times have you maybe said to someone who's brought you work, well, when do you need this uh, as soon as possible? Isn't that the typical answer you usually hear? What I'd like you to do is change your question. Just by changing your question, you will get a different answer. So instead of saying, how soon do you need this by, say, when is the latest I can get this to you? So if you were to ask me that question, I might sit here and think, well, let's see, uh, I really don't need that until next Thursday when I have that particular meeting I'm going into. So yeah, if I get it by next Wednesday, end of day, that's fine. See, that's different than saying, well, as soon as possible. Also, if you ask for specific deadlines, that will help you prioritize your work. I know it does for me. So when I get requests, um, people need things from me. If they don't give me a deadline, do you know where their request goes? Under the A, B, and C list, or the it, it's under the action items where people gave me deadlines. So deadlines are really important. It will help you prioritize. It will also help maybe give you a little leeway and you won't feel so pressured and stressed because you're not having that feeling of, well, as soon as possible, I need this as soon as you can get this to me. And then you get to the spiral. The next tip um, on the one page handout, hopefully you have that, is to recognize the time of day that you are most productive. So I am most productive from early morning, you know, 6, 6.30, 6 o'clock after I've gotten up, had my coffee, until about 2, 2.30. I can just steamroll it. Uh, I, I just feel like a fireball. I, I got um, a lot of creativity. I, I thought, now not every day. I'm not saying about every single day. But I can tell you the majority of the time I know myself well enough that, that those are the best hours for me. I am highly productive, highly focused. So I try to work on the tasks and the projects that require a great deal of 
thought and clarity. And then I try to save the more mundane types of tasks for later in the day. So I'd like you to think for a moment, what is your best time of day? Some people don't really get into high gear until 10 in the morning. Some 11 o'clock. Some don't even really start until 2 o'clock. Now, of course, that would be a problem if you work in an office and you really didn't get into your groove until later in the day. But the idea is to figure out what hours of the day are you most productive and save um, the projects for that time of day that require a great deal of thought and focus and clarity. If you could all schedule your work that way, it would be highly um, effective for you and you would feel like you do have some control. And again, you will get a, a ton of things done. Uh, like I said, between those hours for me up until two, I have a lot of things that I get off my to-do list. It's an awesome feeling. All right, search for alternatives. Look for simpler ways. Look for ways to streamline your processes. That's how you, you really gain control. And um, I was thinking about this last night. I just want to share this with you for a moment. I was thinking we really don't control our day. Our day just happens. Time passes. Things come in. What we control is our attitude, how we approach our work. We control how we manage our time. We control our, our order of priority. So I would like you to think more about that than getting control of your day because the day is just gonna go. Things are gonna happen, things are gonna come in, things are gonna change. But you can get control of all of those items by how you approach them. And when you go home at the end of the day, you'll feel like you would have had um, some accomplishments and some sense of, of power over your work. Because uh, a lot of times as assistants, you don't feel that. So what you should do as you go through your day and you're doing your work, have a question mark in your mind and be asking yourself, how could I do this simpler? Uh, how can I streamline this process? How can I be more efficient? How can I improve the communications with my executive so that we don't have so much back and forth with each other? So really it's you know, increasing your efficiency by asking questions throughout the day. How can I make this easier, simpler, faster? How can I streamline? All right, let's go on to the next one. Establish some quiet time throughout the day. Yes, I actually said the word quiet, um, but I mean quiet in your mind. So if you can go off somewhere and have quiet space for five minutes, that's awesome. Or maybe you can go outside. Uh, and some of you have really large campuses and you have walking trails and you have places that you can go sit on a bench, then I encourage taking that break. But if you don't have that opportunity, take make the quiet time in your mind. So um, for example, yesterday was a perfect example. I had an awesome day yesterday. But what had occurred is I had uh, several meetings, I had calls come in throughout the day. Also, I had a lot of unexpected good work come in. And um, people needing things from me yesterday. So it was, I think, around three o'clock when I realized, wow, I, I really haven't gotten to some of the items that you know I wanted to work on and focus on because the day just carried me away. And at that point, I took the five minutes to just go through everything that was on my desk or on my list, reassess. I organized any papers I had, I placed them into priority order. Basically, I regrouped with myself, took a deep breath, and then I was ready to continue with my day. So I highly encourage you to make the time. And I will, assistants will write me and they'll, they'll say, Joan, I have no time. People are coming at me all the time and they need this and they need that. And, 
Yes, I know that. Um, also, though, you need to know that you have the power within you to stop for five minutes. It's a choice you make. No one is forcing you to do this very thing this very minute. And if they are, then that's not a good situation. So it's more about us being committed to our wellness, being committed to taking the time to regroup, to take the time to reprioritize, to take the time to focus, and you can do it. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I love this one. Delegate at work and at home. Now, I know many of you are thinking, I can't delegate, I'm an assistant. Who am I gonna delegate to, Joan? Um, but you possibly can. Maybe there are some tasks or items that you can delegate to someone else in your area, someone in your department, maybe someone in another department. I mean, you really have to stop and, and again, ask yourself and think, is there um, someone else who should be doing this or someone else who maybe is more qualified or more talented at something and therefore they're going to get it done faster. Um, you could also, I mean, maybe there are some administrative peers that might help you out in a pinch and you can delegate some of your work to that individual. I also love the round file. So you can delegate to your trash can. In other words, there may be items and things that you're doing that you don't really need to be working on. They're not gonna have a great impact on the business or on your executive. And um, so that, that's a favorite place for me uh, that I like to, or where I like to delegate to. Also, I want to encourage you to delegate at home. Um, I was a working mother. Uh, I had, you know, from the time my kids were like six months old. So I know what it's like to have a career, to work, um, to, to be a wife, um, to have a hundred things going on. And also looking at the holidays, there's so much more added to our plate with shopping and baking and parties and gifts and um, all of the extra stuff that goes with it. So those of you who have families and, and children or partners at home, um, I highly encourage you, don't feel bad. Everyone should pitch in. Uh, everyone, you know, it, it's a family thing. So don't feel bad, don't have that guilt, delegate whatever you can and feel good about it. The, our uh, number nine tip, organize your workspace. I know it seems like a little, and you know, what's the big deal, but um, research has proven that when we have a lot of stuff around our desks, we have clutters or we have a lot of different messy piles that our brain actually can't be as clear and focused as it would be if our desk was organized, our space was organized and such. And believe me, I've seen many assistance desks uh, from the, when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching work where I'm sitting at their desk and stuff is just everywhere. And I think, how can you think? How did you possibly know what your priorities are? And actually, other executives have told me this. They have said that if their assistant's desk is messy and stuff's kind of scattered and stacked all over, they're really concerned that their assistant is going to miss something important. It's true. How can you find a needle in a haystack? So I want to encourage you in terms of organizing your desk. First of all, get rid of the clutter. Um, cluster similar items. So for example, I have um, a tray, I know you can't see it over here, but to the right of me, I have two trays and these are for my phone call uh, related items. So if I have, let's say, I'll grab this a minute, um, I have a folder up here that is related to um, a client, a potential client I have to follow up with. Um, and I have to make a phone call. So that goes in my top tray. 
which is where I keep any type of paper items, anything tangible that is related to a phone call I have to make. So it goes in that stack. So then I'll, I'll stop, maybe throughout the day, I'll take five minutes and I'll say, okay, I'm gonna go make some phone calls right now and get hold of these people. Well, many times you don't get hold of people today, right? So then if I haven't gotten a hold of that individual, I take this folder and I put it in the bottom tray and that's the call me back stack. So the great part is when that person calls me back, I'm not digging through stuff all around my desk. Oh yeah, where, where is that? What was I gonna talk to you about? I know exactly where to go. I go to that tray and I can quickly pull out their folder and I have my notes right there about what I called them about. So it, it's little things like that. Um, cluster, any similar items that you, you have or tasks. So maybe you have a lot of reading to do or you have some reports that you have to work on. Cluster those types of items. Uh, I have a lot of big project binders because I have a lot of different projects that involve a lot of writing and a lot of um, levels. Uh, let's say we have marketing and um, we have budgets with these different projects. So if I do have binders, I do place those on my credenza, but they're in order of precedence. So I lay the binders down and the projects that are the hottest projects, the most important, are closest to me. The less critical the project, the farther I move the binder away. So that's a little secret, a tip to keep in mind. The higher priority items should always be closest at hand, you know, where you can touch them and grab them right away. Remember, your desk is not for storage. Your desk is a place of action. So if you've got stuff that you're just sitting there that you're not even going to work on for three weeks, those should be in your follow-up system. So it's really, really important. To, to declutter, and this is a great time of year to declutter. We do that here at Office Dynamics. Um, I, I expect everyone to look through their, their files, their hard copy files, soft copy files. Um, this is when we clean house. This is when we get organized for the new year so that when we come back from holiday break, we're ready to go. And then uh, the last, bullet item I have for you. So the 10th strategy, and I'll, I'll quickly go through all of these at the end as well, just to, um, in case you didn't get them down out yet, plan ahead. And I know this is one that I'm still always working on. Uh, I'm getting better and I know I can do better, but it's really to, again, make some time so that you can plan ahead. In other words, even right now as you're working on or going through the month of December, looking at your ex executive's calendar and any items on your calendar, what's coming up in January and February? What kind of meetings are gonna be coming up? What kind of events? Are there any uh, staff meetings that you have to work on? I mean, what's expected? What can you anticipate? And then now would be the time to map out a plan, to start to prioritize um, items, to start to think about what's going to be required of you. Are you going to need any supplies? Are you going to need to reach out to any people? Are you going to have to delegate anything? Um, and I constantly have to be reminded of this. I just got off a good webinar for me that I was attending. And, and again, this presenter was talking about the importance of before you launch an event or you launch a new product, how we have to take the time to map out our whole schedule of what and how we're going to do it. And so again, I myself was just reminded of this this morning of wow, how many times do I get excited here and we get excited about something new and we go launch it. You know, we haven't maybe made the time to think out all the steps. So I sympathize with you. I know how hard it is to take and make time to plan. But I want to encourage you, just like I'm encouraging myself and my staff, to be reminded 
that when we make time and we plan, we have better outcomes, we feel less stressed, we can be proactive, we can anticipate, we do a much, much better job, we're happier people, and the people you support are going to be um, really pleased with the outcomes. So uh, I don't want to overtake your time. Um, we said that these were going to be 20 to 30 minute webinars um, during our 12 days of Christmas. But what I'd like to quickly do goes to the offering and we're going to have a, a giveaway today. Um, so please don't go anywhere. I'm just going to quickly go through the 10 tips again. Clarify your top five priorities of the day early in the day. Focus, remember, on the task at hand. Neutralize information overload. Ask others for specific deadlines. Recognize the time of day you're most productive. Search for simpler, faster ways. Establish some quiet time for yourself. Today, I want you to start that today. Um, delegate at work and at home. Organize your workspace and plan ahead. All right, Jasmine, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, well, we have, thank you guys so much. Looking at the chat and, and following along with that throughout the webinar has been excellent. So many wonderful tips, and I have so many awesome things to share with you after the webinar. So um, that's exciting. And what's also exciting is the special offer that we're giving um, 12 days, a special offer, um, and that is the Get Things Done and Control Your Day um, full-length webinar that Joan did um, a couple of years ago, and it's actually a $49 webinar that is on sale or special um, today through, um, I believe, the end of the month, and that is for $4.98. So it is about 10%, 90% off if you, um, and let me see if I can load that offer here for you. Hopefully you can see that on the sidebar and get a link to that offer. But that is our, our Get Things Done and Control Your Day webinar for only $4.98. There's no coupon code necessary. You just add it to your cart, and then the price goes down once it's in your shopping cart. And then, of course, you get your login credentials shortly after you register. So um, you can start watching that as early as today if you like. And, of course, there's no um, number of times that you have to watch that. There's no limit, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you can watch it as often as you like, and it doesn't expire. So that is our gift to you. And then we also have, it's time. Let me see if I can get this here. Can you, can you hear this? Do you hear it? <laughs> our jingle bell giveaway time yes, gift time giveaway. it's our giveaway time yeah, so don't go anywhere today yeah we are giving away and we are drawing randomly for who's in the room um we are giving away the mastering exceptional self-leadership program that joan and i did recorded live in 2014 you will get your access credentials today and you can start watching that program and just like the get things done it doesn't expire and you can watch the videos as often as you like and it comes with a downloadable workbook and say um, I believe a $299 value and we'll also be sending you a special treat in the mail so watch for that and let's see here who is going to be our winner we are randomly drawing we have it looks like 870 in the room right now and we are going to i'm not looking i'm just clicking randomly and that is lisa let's see here lisa your email so lisa menser at wc tr resources you are our winner we'll be in contact with you on redeeming that prize and getting your mailing address to send your special treat and of course we have one more thing please plan to join us again tomorrow for goal setting and branding for 2017 we have another excellent topic to cover with you and um, thank you for being here and helping us kick off our 12 days of christmas webinar event Yes, thank you very much. And we promise we're going to have lots of fun, so be sure to come back. Have a great day. Bye.